to our YouTube channel where we explore the exciting world of nursing education in Ghana. Today, let's dive into why understanding cultural diversity is super important for aspiring nurses and everyone interested in healthcare. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's talk about culture. Culture is like a big mix of shared behaviors, values and tradition that define a group of people. In Ghana, we are lucky to have lots of different cultures like the Akans, Gans, Awes and Dagombes all adding to our culture's beautiful diversity. So why should nurses care about cultural diversity? Well, it is all about being culturally competent, meaning being able to understand and respect different cultures. Without these skills, nurses might struggle to communicate or build trust with patients, which can lead to not so great health outcomes. Imagine a nurse taking care of a Muslim patient from the north. Knowing about things like modesty, Fasting and gender roles is essential for giving respectful care. And patients from the Volta region might have unique beliefs about illnesses that nurses need to understand. By embracing cultural diversity, nurses can create care plans that connect with patients' values, leading to better health results and stronger relationships. Zooming out, cultural diversity in nursing education has a big impact on healthcare across Ghana. In a country where we are working hard to make sure everyone gets good healthcare, Culturally competent nurses are like gold. They can bridge gaps, tackle inequalities, and make sure quality care reaches every corner of our nation. If you're dreaming of becoming a nurse, it's super important to learn about different cultures, talk to classmates from diverse backgrounds, pay attention during clinical rotation to see how culture affects patient care, and push for cultural training in your nursing program. Most importantly, approach every patient with respect and openness. Being culturally aware isn't just good for patients. It is great for nursing care too. Whether you are working locally or globally, being culturally competent opens up tons of exciting opportunities to make a real difference in people's lives. At this point, we are delving into the rich historical perspective of tribes in Ghana. Stay tuned as we explore its fascinating past in an intriguing display. I pray you greetings from the northern part of Ghana. I am in the person of Kwana as Tiki Awini. Go back 
out and use objects to name them and add a to it. So when they came back, storm, which is kubur, they added a to it, which is a kubur. Tia, which is tree, they added t to it, which is a tia. A tia means life. A kubur means strength. That is why when you see the Lord next, we are strong, healthy, and strong. Yes, that is we the Lordness. And they put us what the God stole them. So they added, they started adding A to all the objects in the land. So listen to what happened. When the Zabarama Empire came back for the war, our forefathers said, Akubri, Ike, 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 Zai. And when Akubri got up to fight, they all died. That means Akubri is strong. What the God told us, it actually happened. Yes, so that is why you see that our names we add R to it. Like a Puni, like a Winnie, like a Dongo, like a Tia, like a Peluba. Yes, we are known as farmers. We put in our effort to farm because we have one family season. Of our migration and then our customs and traditions. 
check under King Angokoli the first. The king had a beautiful relationship with his subjects. The nephew of the king misbehaved with impunity against the elders of the land. This young man did a lot of things by molesting the ladies in the town. One day, he inflicted a deep machete wound on one of the elders by name Toby Aska. Say Toby Aska. Yes, he inflicted a machete wound on Toby Aska. The relatives of Toby Aga sneak him out of the court to get him cured, but he unfortunately died. And by so doing, the relatives of this Toby Aga went to the king to seek justice for their king's man. Because according to tradition, it was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. As a result of this, the nephew of the king was executed for supposedly slaughtering Toby Aga. Later, Toby Aga finally found out that Toby Aga was still alive. And this means that the people played a fast one on Toby Agokoli. This marked the beginning of his tyranny against his people. He gave his people unrealistic tasks to perform for him. Notable among these tasks is the kneading of clay made with broken bottles. Can you imagine? As if that was not enough, Toby Agokoli one day stood up and told the people of his land to make a robe made of clay for him. The young men in the town were so overwhelmed and so they ran to Toby Tegli, the wise man, to seek an advice. They then went back to Toby Agokoli to tell him that our great king, our elders are asking if you can give us a sample of the robe you are requesting for. This enraged the king, and so he asked his executioner to go and execute all the elders. The young men then ran to the elders and informed them about the execution plan that was being made against them. They then, they then devised a the plan to flee from the wicked king. They instructed the maiden to prepare some short meals and dessert. And the men were equally asked to wet the mud houses with as much water as they can get, and which they did diligently. The elders sent delegators and people to go to the chief and tell him that they were sorry for their actions and they were ready to make amends. And so they invited him to a banquet in the evening so as to show a sign of remorse. Then, compulsions were placed in the chief's food together with his warriors, and he sheepishly enjoyed it. After a few minutes, he fell into a deep slumber, and so the elders told the people it was time to flee. And so they took the backward movement I did when I was coming to. After that, the people flee, and then in the morning, the chief woke up from his deep slumber. And when he realized that the people had fled, he instructed his dispatched his warriors to go in search of them. When the people realized that they were being followed by the warriors, they began to panic. And this compelled some of the elders who were believed to possess supernatural power to turn into a, a royal family, which we saw in the every land, Toby Danby. Say Toby Danby. Toby Yes. Toby Danby disrupted the footsteps of the people, and so the warriors could not keep track of them. Hence, their victorious fleet. And this is the main reason why, in my land, the every land, it is not allowed for anybody, whether a foreigner or a member of that particular land, to kill the royal python. It is a great sound. After the people left Nordshire, 
when you come to my tribe, we say me mamwachi. It means good morning. And me, being the person to come and tell you a brief history about the Akan ethnic group. And today, I would like everybody to call me Nanefia Sechibia Amorfua Pasebi. The Akan migrated from the Sahara Desert. They are made up of the Asante, Epiapum, Achim, Kuomo, and so on. But today, I will emphasize more on the Asante Kingdom. The Asante migrated from Niger River. They came to settle at the central part of Ghana between 11th and 13th century. The right pronunciation is not Asante, it is called Ashante. It was called Ashante by the Europeans because they didn't know the right pronunciation for it. The meaning of Asante simply means sa and easy. So Asante simply means because of war. people and they won but unfortunately the king died in the year 1831 and was succeeded by Nana Obriyabwa. When I say to two kids, a priest called Okon Fanachi and I know everybody knows who Okon Fanachi is. He's one of the greatest priests in Ghana. He helped us say to two one various wars. He helped us say to one various wars. He conquered a lot of land. And because of him, that is why I sent it as one of the greatest empire ever. <laughs>
So, in a nutshell, celebrating cultural diversity isn't just a nice idea. It's a must for nurses in Ghana and beyond. By embracing all the different cultures that make up our country, we can ensure that every patient gets care that's not just medically sound, but also respectful and understanding. Let's keep talking about diversity, inclusion, and cultural competence. Share your thoughts below and let's work together to create a nursing workforce that's compassionate, culturally aware, and committed to excellence. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay curious, stay caring, and keep aiming for nursing. <laughs>